My name is Diane Kraus. I'm a professor at Yale University where I'm also associate director of the Yale Stem Cell Center. The project that we're very excited to publish is about these incredibly fascinating cells called megakaryocytes. So megakaryocytes are the cells in the bone marrow that are responsible for making platelets, and platelets are necessary for blood clotting. And one of the things that's been a mystery about megakaryocytes is how they get so large. They're called megakaryocytes because they're huge. We know that this is from a process called endomitosis, where the DNA divides, but the cell doesn't. So it doesn't undergo cytokinesis after the cell divides. And this work elucidates some of the mechanisms that take place to prevent cytokinesis from occurring, even though DNA division has occurred. This project actually investigates um, what genes are involved in making sure that the cell undergoes endomitosis rather than regular mitosis, which leads to cytokinesis and actually the separation of the cell. The megakaryocytes undergo two different kinds of cell division in order to finish their endomitotic cycles. So megakaryocytes, as I said, can be very, very large, and they can go up to 128N. So they have many, many copies of the nucleus. And what had been shown prior to our work is that this seems to occur in two different phases. The first phase is when the cell is going from 2N to 4N. So most cells are 2N, and then when they're undergoing cell division, mitosis, you have two copies of the nuclei, and then when the cell finishes cytokinesis, you have two separate cells. In the megakaryocytes from the 2N to 4N, the very first endomitotic cycle, they get almost to the end of cytokinesis, but they don't complete it. For the subsequent endomitotic cycles, 4N to 8N, 8N to 16, etc., the cells don't even start cytokinesis. You just see a little bit of a blip in the outside of the membrane. And what we're showing in this paper is that there really are two different stages with two different mechanisms. One of the things you need to know to understand the work that we're publishing here is that proteins called guanine exchange factors activate row A, which activates actin polymerization. In the cytokinetic furrow, the first thing that happens is the cleavage furrow starts to form, and that requires actin polymerization. And there's a single guanine exchange factor that's necessary for that, and that's called ECT2. Much later, during the cleavage furrow contraction, there's a different guanine exchange factor that's necessary for the very end, when the cells are about to separate, and that one's called GEFH1. And what we ended up showing in this paper is that GEFH1 is down-regulated at the 2N to 4N stage of endomitosis, and then at subsequent rounds of endomitosis, when you barely even see a cleavage furrow form, the ECT2 is missing. So this is a novel finding that's showing that different guanine exchange factors are differentially regulated at stages of endomitosis in the megakaryocytes. Yuan Gao, the first author on the paper, came to the lab with a lot of expertise in guanine exchange factors, and in her postdoctoral studies in the lab, made the link between guanine exchange factors and endomitosis. She has since moved on in her career and is now an investigator at Boston Biomedical. Another aspect of our studies shows that MKL1, a transcriptional cofactor, regulates GEFH1 for the first stage of endomitosis. In this time-lapse study, you can see the second stage of endomitosis occurring. The DNA separates and is pulled to opposite ends of the cell, but rather than dividing into two separate cells, the cell has a boarded cell division and remains one cell with multiple nuclei. So the work that we're doing is relevant not only to normal hematopoiesis and how normal megakaryocytes mature to make platelets, but it's also relevant to leukemia. Because in leukemia, for example, in megakaryoblastic leukemia, the problem is that the cells don't fully mature. Instead, they stay as 2N blasts. And we think we found a link between normal megakaryocytopoiesis and what goes wrong in megakaryocytic leukemia. And it might have to do with that GEFH1, that GEFH1 that is missing in normal megakaryocytes when they abort the cytokinesis to become 4N cells. The next step, what we're doing now in the lab, is directly testing the hypothesis that mutations in MKL1 will cause elevated levels of GEFH1, and that those elevated levels of GEFH1 will not allow the cells to undergo endomitosis. And then the question is, if a cell is inhibited from undergoing endomitosis, will it actually be inhibited in its maturation? We predict that the maturation will be inhibited, but we don't know yet, and that's where we're, what we're doing right now.